Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. This scripture has proven to be the guiding compass for Gloria Roberts' spiritual walk. Fueled by her passion to see people change from the inside out, Gloria engages her community with a sense of compassion and humor while sharing the good news of Christ to others. Gloria's spiritual formation began under the watchful eye of her great-grandmother, Teresa Wilson. As a young child, she participated in the Bible Way Sunbeams, 1016 Club, Senior Young People, and currently the Rain or Shine Fellowship Club. Gloria is an anointed woman of God who humbly serves in various capacities in her local community and at the Bible Way Church of Washington, D.C., under Bishop Ronald L. Demery, Jr., Pastor. She is the Minister Director of Praise and Worship, where she engages the congregation in song by utilizing her innovative style and anointing to solicit congregational participation in worship. Her unique presentation of God's word in musical motion and exhortation invokes the presence of the Holy Spirit to rest upon the worshipers. She is also an active member of the Bible Way Women Ministry SOAR. Bible Way Instructor for Bible Way Empowered Youth and Young Adult Ministry, Minister and Facilitator at the Bible Way Women's Retreat, serves as Project Manager on the Planned Church Events, Conferences, and serves on the Prison Outreach Ministry as a Bible Teacher, as well as the Director of the Annual Health and Wellness Day. She is a certified fitness trainer and is the visionary and founder of Word of Size, a health and wellness ministry that encourages its participants to embrace a holistic approach to a healthy lifestyle through faith, intentional actions, and choices. In 2017, she was featured on the Salsa Praise Trinity Broadcast Network, TBN, on Fit for My Assignment. Gloria graduated from Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. Gloria holds a bachelor's degree in printing management, master's degree in Christian ministry, and she recently received a doctrine degree of theology. She currently works for the federal government in acquisitions. She believes exposure to high education, both secular and theology, along with sound Bible-based teachings of the birth, the death, and resurrection of Christ are necessary tools to be empowered to live a spiritual balance and fulfilly engage Christian-centered life as a disciple of Jesus Christ. One conference, please welcome our sister, Dr. Gloria Robertson. Blessings of the Lord make of rich and it add no sorrow to it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us Sacrifice of praise, which is our fruit of our lips to give him our best praise. Oh God, I love you. I bless you, God. I honor you. I honor your presence, God. I honor your anointing, God. I honor the spirit of Christ. Hallelujah. I honor you, God. I surrender myself unto you, oh God. Throw your weight around. Hallelujah. Do what you want to do. Hallelujah. Manifest your presence, oh God. Go to every row, hallelujah. Speak to our heart, God. Shake us, hallelujah. Bring us up higher in you, oh God. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit has to say. And Father, we promise we'll thank you. We promise we'll give you a praise. We'll promise to say that you did this, God. And for this, we say one more time, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. I just honor God for being here on this afternoon. I honor God for 
the shepherd of this house, none other than our pastor, Bishop Ronald L. Demery Jr. And I honor God for our first lady, LaShawn Demery. Amen, amen. And I am just so grateful that I didn't have to leave the house by myself this afternoon, that I encouraged my brother, asked him, was he gonna come? He said, I come with you on this time. So I thank God that I have my baby brother with me, none other than Elder Charles Ross Jr. Hallelujah. Isn't it good when you are connected to family? You need to look at somebody and say that family matters. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Such an honor to stand beside, behind this sacred desk. And our theme for this conference is all for one and one for all. Can you just repeat that all for one and one for all? I hope you don't mind if I just have a conversation with you on this afternoon. Is that all right? Come on, is that all right? A lot of times that when we come to the house of God, people are talking at us, but not to us. And sometimes we don't really always receive what is for us because we look at the vessel and don't look at the lifestyle. We don't look at what they carry. And can I tell you that sometimes we just need to close our eyes and say, hallelujah, Holy Spirit, help us to hear what the Spirit has to say to me. We need to look in the mirror of God's word and say, God, speak to me. Well, I just did a little research on um, that little theme called All for One and One for All. And I come to find out that there was these dudes, they were called the Three Musketeers. And they were from the French army. And they were charged with protecting the king. They were kind of like seek the secret service of that day. And, but they went to war. These three musketeers, which was really, there were four of them, they were exceptional and great at their craft. However, they had a slogan that they would say to one another. They would say, one for all, which meant they were saying that, I am going to be with you with whatever that goes wrong, I'm with you. And then they would say one for all meant that we ain't going to leave you behind. And can I tell you with the one conference, when we think about all for one, meaning that you got to get in there together and you can't let a sister or a brother lag behind, that means if I'm going forward, you're going to go forward. If I'm prospering, you're going to be prospering. And the problem is, is a lot of times we like to move forward and leave people behind. But I can tell you the next move of God is going to be you got to Grab somebody by the hand and say, I'm not going to let you stay in Lodabar, but I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to grab your hand and we're going to walk this walk together. Hallelujah. My story will be taking place in the sacred scriptures of Numbers, the 27th chapter of Numbers, beginning at verses 1, and I will be ending at verses 14. Hallelujah. Numbers, the 27th chapter, verses 1 through 14. And it reads, Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Machar, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of the daughters, Mala, Noah, Hagla. Milcah and Terzah. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our fathers died in the wilderness, and he was not of the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sins and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he has no sons. Give us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. 
And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among the father's brethren, and thou shalt cause the inheritance of the father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a man have no son, then he shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughters. If he have no daughters, then he shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he has no brethren, then they shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father have no brethren, then thou shalt give his inheritance unto the king's men, unto the next to his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statue of judgment, as the Lord commanded Moses. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just honor you for this time of sharing. Father God, speak to us, God. Father, hide me, God, behind the cross, God. Help me, oh God, to decrease that the Holy Spirit will increase and share a practical word that will revolutionize us to go higher in you. In Jesus' name, we pray. In our humanness, we try to control everything, including God. Yet we serve a God who refuses to be controlled by us. That's because part of the mystery and the adventure of following Jesus is to trust him. No matter what's going on around you, we have to get to the point that we become saints who believe God. It has been my survey that we have a lot of tongue-talking, shouting, Bible-toting people who don't believe God. And I want to subscribe to you on this afternoon. We need to believe what God's Word says and hold fast to our, the profession of faith without wavering. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To keep our hearts open to Him, we have to expect, LaShawn, life interruptions. Sometimes unexpected things are going to happen. But can I tell you, sometimes God used the unexpected things to put you in the position where you can hear God and get ready for your miracle. God wants us to learn how to accept every unexpected event as an invitation to trust him as his word. A life lived like that is going to be powerful if you can just trust God. If, what if we learn, if we will learn to embrace the shocks and the, tr and then the tremors and the different things of life, God will help us to make it to the other side. So many times when things get worse, sometimes when things get worse, they get worse before they get better. They seem to get harder before they get easier. It gets darker before it gets lighter. We doubt God because sometimes we can't see him because we can't trace him. The dots don't seem to be connected. And what I want to tell you about these daughters of Zelophehad, I need to tell you a little bit of history about this particular book. The book, The Children of Israel, was in between a rock and a hard place. I don't know, have you ever been in the middle of your promise and your fulfillment? You know that God gave you a promise. You know that God told you something to do. But in the midst of you waiting, you are looking with your eyes and you're like saying, God, how can you do this for me when I got pain in my body? How can you do this for me when everything is going wrong? How can you do this for me? for me when I don't have enough finance. And what God is saying, I just need you to trust me on this one. 
the background of the book of Numbers. Numbers is the fourth book in the Bible, and it is the fourth book of the Pentateuch or the Torah. And in this particular book, it is written by Moses. The book of Numbers opened with the people of Israel in camp at the foot of Mount Sinai, receiving instructions from God, the word from their leader, which was Moses. Numbers derives from the records of two occasions where Moses had to take a census or a consensus of the Israel. Numbers is a book about people on the road from bondage to freedom. The people in the book of Numbers kept repeatedly, repeatedly complaining and completing and com continuing to sin. And what happened? It was a cycle. The Israelites went in, uh, uh, in a diabolical cycle of idolatry, of continuing to do things their way. But the grace of God was so wonderful that even in the midst of the cycle, God had a way of showing them that I'm going to still bless you and I'm going to still bring you out. Can you just say, God, I thank you that you're going to bring me out. Numbers is about a book about God and about the promises of God. Can I tell you that the promises of God stand of sure? Can I tell you that you can bank on God's word? God's words would never fail you. Even though we become failure in our process, God will never fail you. Now, what happened in this particular book is that all of the adults who fled Egypt, except for Joshua and Jacob, are supposed to, and they had died in the wilderness. The spies were sent to Canaan to bring back a discouragement, and, and in the, the, the spies were sent to Canaan to bring back a favorable report, but they brought back an evil report, and they caused the people to think that God is not going to give us the land that he promised. So you had the 10 spies saying, I don't think we can do it. But it was only two that says that I believe that God is all more able to give us the victory. Can I tell you, sometimes you got to stay with the word, even when the majority say, oh, it don't look like you can do that. You don't got another education for that. I don't, you, you know, you, you live on the wrong side of the track. I can't see you. I can't envision you doing that. But can I tell you that the word of God supersedes every word that someone tells you that does not line up with the word of God? That's why you have to know who you are and who you are. And your experience does not define who you are. But what defines who you are is what God says who you are. Hallelujah. This particular story about these five courageous women, I don't know, I was just thinking, I can only imagine, you have these five daughters who are the daughters of Zelophehad, and the Bible says that they showed up. They showed up, and, and, and I don't know if you really realize this, that when they showed up, they showed up in the middle of a camp that was regulated by all men. Men who were in charge and large, but men who had a heart for God. Can you just imagine, can you allow me to use my imagination? They came into the camp and all of the 12 tribes was formed around them. And each one of them, when they came out, they were around, surrounded. There was the tent. There was the tabernacle. There were the different places. And, and, and they went to the places where only the high-ranking men congregated to the place. They had the tablets from Sinai. They had the Ark of the Covenant that was there. And then they had Moses, who was standing in the middle of the camp. But what makes this story so interesting is that never before had five women had the audacity to come before the judicial council to, to plead their case. Lord, help me, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap our hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 As I did my study, I found out that these young ladies had overheard Moses was teaching, and he was teaching about the Levite's marriage. 
And there was those who were married, but they didn't have a ch child. And they were talking about the inheritance. And, and they thought within themselves, if a widow can claim the name of her husband and still be counted, what about us? And in this particular story is that what makes this story so important is that these five daughters was going to lose their inheritance because they were born females. And what happened is that when we go and look at the scripture, can you, can you follow me here? And it says that when the daughters of Zelophehad showed up, hallelujah, they began to present their case. And and how they went was so significant is that sometimes when you're trying to present your case, you can't come any kind of way. You got to come in a divine order. And the culture of that day was that women did not have a voice. So what happened is that the reason why these particular women decided to go is because when they thought about in the 26th chapter, it was talking about this consensus was going to take place, and they realized that they would not have any inheritance because inheritance only went to male, to the male seed. And so they thought within them themselves, and they were five sisters, and their sisters all had different meanings of their names. Um, Mala, which was the oldest, her name meant sickness or infirmity. And you know, it doesn't really tell you anything about their personalities, but whatever her sickness or infirmity was, I believe she said, I'm going to buckle it up because I must still believe that God is able. And then it was one of the sisters, her name was Hogla, and her name meant dancing. So you had one sister who had infirmity, you had one sister who was a dancer, and then you had another sister, her name was Noah. Her name meant movement. Sometimes, I don't know about you, sometimes you need to know when to move. And sometimes we stay in a place stagnated because we don't see our purpose being fulfilled, but sometimes in order to see your purpose being fulfilled, you got to make a move and trust God. And then we have the sister named Sister Deshaun. This sister named Melkar, her name meant queen. So there was a queen in the midst of the sisters. And then you had the baby sister named Terzah, mean pleasing. You had these five daughters, these five sisters who came together on a one accord and they said, we're going to go unto the leaders because we have an issue because our names and we won't have an inheritance. Can I tell you, a lot of times we don't get what we need because we go in the wrong spirit. I don't care what your personality is. Sometimes, sisters, we got to connect with one another. In this season, I know you don't like wearing pink. You don't like wearing the still standing church, the still standing shirt. But on today, we want to show unification. So let us all put it on on one accord. I know that ain't your thing, but we want it to be our thing because we want to be a one heart and we want to be a one mind and we want to be of one judgment. And these sisters... Whatever their dysfunctions was, they said, we're going to get it together because we want to present ourselves and we need to present our case. Can I tell you, sometimes you got to lock hands with somebody. You may not agree with everything or what they're about, but you need to agree to disagree because there is a point, there is a vision, there is a purpose that we need to meet. And the only way we're going to meet it, we got to do it together. So we have here these women. They went up. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. They went up, and the Bible said they showed up in the middle of the camp. They showed up, and they stood before Moses and before Eleazar and the priests and all the congregation at the door, and then they started to talk. Can I tell you that sometimes you need, if you're not good, with being the speaker, you let somebody speak for you. If you're good, if you're the mathematician and you're good, you're good with numbers, you need that person. If you're good with organization, the thing about it, we try to be a one army show. Sometimes when you can't do it all, sometimes you gotta connect with some, you gotta bring yourself down and say, I don't know it all. So who can I plug in? Because at the, at the end of the day, it's about us doing it together. And whatever your strength is, I need to lock into your strength so they won't see my weakness. So whatever the weakness was, 
were among the sisters. They didn't know the weakness because when they held hands together, they came as one dynamic force to do what God told them to do. Can I tell you, God doesn't care about you. He cares about us collectively. Now, you say, what do you mean? Meaning that it's not about you when it comes to the things of God. The only thing that is about you is when you look in the mirror and God wants you to line yourself up with his word. That's when it's about you. That's when it's about us changing and transforming ourselves into the image of his dear son. But other than that, it's a collective thing for us because whatever we're going to do is this season, we're going to do it together. And and can I say to somebody, say level up? And that's my theme. My theme is level up. So what these five sisters did, they leveled up. Level up is a term if you ever played any arcade or video games. Level up meaning you have to have the strategy so you can go to the next to the next level, but, but, it, but you got to pass the first one. You got to do the strategy, what's necessary. You got to put your mind and your heart in it so you can get to the next level. And can I say or tell you, we can't get to the next level until we strategize together and every part has an effective part in what God wants to do. And if you refuse to use that part, it's not going to come to a success. Every part supplies the need and you need to plug in to every person that's able to give you so you can get that expected in. Level up! Hallelujah. And then in the 18th verse it says, Hallelujah. They begin to talk and they said, and they said, Moses, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I kind of lost my space. Help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are y'all praying for me? Hallelujah. And then the third verse, they said, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord, the company of Korah. But he died in his own sins, and he had no sons. I don't know if you remember the story of Korah. That is taking place in the 16th chapter of Numbers. Korah was actually the cousin of Moses and Aaron. And what ended up happening is that Korah began to ban against 250, and they began to say, I don't know who Moses think he is. He the only one going to do all of this ruling. We got as enough knowledge as he has. And so the Bible goes on to say that Korah had led a rebellion against Moses, and, and the accusations was that they were saying that Moses exalts himself over the congregation. And this rebellion led to... Hallelujah. It led to, can you, you know what? Don't let one person mess up your destiny. You better be careful. These private conversations, these people want to come against leadership. You better be careful. You better be careful. So Korah was one of the spiritual leaders, and he was related to Moses. Can I tell you, sometimes there's somebody in your family that's trying to get you disconnected from your purpose. And can I tell you, God is no disrespect to a person. God will cut you off just like he cut off Korah. And so what I'm trying to say is that when these daughters went, they were just wanted, they wanted leadership to know, yeah, yes, our father did die in the, in, in, in the wilderness, but he was not of the group of Korah. So, so guess what? His name should still be exalted and remembered in the place of things. Can I tell you, sometimes when you're going to present your case, you need to know your family history. You need to know the truth about the truth. You need to know the positive things that's going to help you get to the next level. And can I tell you something else about these daughters of Zelophehad? I'm just crazy enough to believe. And you know what? All oh, while I was studying this, it kept saying the daughters of Zelophehad, and at each time it named all five of these women. All five of these women. Don't you know that's unheard of? All five of these women were continuing to be named. And I was saying, God, what are you saying? God was telling me that one wasn't as important as the other. They were equally important. You need to look at your neighbor and say, we're equally important in the scheme of things of God. We are equally important in the scheme of things of God. I 
am just crazy enough to believe that Zalofa had had a good relationship with his daughters. I believe that there was time. Can you, can you just walk with me into my imagination? I just believe that the father, hallelujah, Zalofa had when the little girls were little because he already knew that he was one of the unbelieving kind and he already knew that he wasn't going over to the promised land. But he began to tell his daughters, hallelujah, how God brought them through out of Egypt, how he brought them through out of dry land. He began to testify and tell them about all of the miracles that God has performed and I can see those daughters just getting faith in it, getting their faith filled up and he said whatever you do whatever you do trust God believe his word trust God believe his word and so now I believe when the daughters found out that they were not going to get an inheritance that they begin to go back in their mind and say wait a minute wait a minute we remember how our father told us that there was going to be a promised land that there was going to be an inheritance. And since there's going to be inheritance, we are due an inheritance too. So we're going to walk up there and we're going to let them know that we are the seed, we are the daughters of our father. And our father didn't do nothing wrong. He was a good man. He was a great man. He trained us in the Torah. We read the Torah. We was at church. We were there doing the things of God. We were connecting to God. We kept ourselves holy. We kept ourselves pure. We connected, we connected, and therefore we're going to go on up and we're going to present our case. Give us that which belongs to us. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And I believe while the father was at the table, he just said, daughters, let me turn to the book of Leviticus, and I don't want you to ever remember, forget this. And he began to say to them, this is God talking, I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. Can I tell you, I cannot tell you, it is so important to make sure that we plant the word of God in our spirit. Because I tell you that this world system will try to knock the word out of you. The world system will try to make you doubt what God is telling you. Can I say, I believe it's the daughters of Zalophahad was here today, they would say, what's up with you millennials today? Why do you have a problem with waiting? on God? Why do you have a problem with trusting God? Why do you have a problem believing that God going to do what he said he's going to do? Why are you mixing yourself with the world system? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is still holiness. It's still right. It is still right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And back in those particular days, Girls look like girls. I believe the daughters of Zalofa had would be saying, why are you looking like a dude here in church? Why, why is it that I can't tell who you are? I believe the daughters of Zalofa had to say, what's up with you? What's up with going on with you? Why do you have so much bitterness? Why do you have so much hatred? Why don't you believe God? We believe if God did it back there, he's going to do it again. And what's so interesting about the daughters of Zalofa had, you got to realize this. They didn't have the land yet. The land was forthcoming. Their fires was forthcoming. Can I tell you, they begin to activate their faith. The problem is we wait till a situation happen and then we want to try to get on in there. But can I tell you that these daughters plan. They say we ain't going to wait till we get there. We're going to go to them now. We're going to plead our case now. And I come to tell you, you need to be prepared. In part of their preparation, they knew their history. They had their ears open. They knew about the Torah. They knew about the inheritance. And they knew about their history. And they refused to settle for the status quo. And you know what I thought was very interesting? I'm sure that there were other daughters in the land of Israel whose fathers didn't have any sons. But it's something about you can't compare yourself with other people. I guess they say we don't have nothing to do with what's going on in that tribe over there. But all we know as for us and our house, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going to get what God has for us. And I come to tell you, you need to go get it and you need to level up. Yeah. 
And then the fourth verse says, why should the name of our fathers be done away from his family? Because he has no sons. Give us the possession among the brethren of our fathers. There is a power and a dignity in the daughters standing before the assemblies. The daughters had no advocate. They didn't have, hallelujah, seven on your side. They didn't have Jesse Jackson. They didn't have Facebook and Twitter <laughs> to tell their issues. They didn't have a group of people to rally behind them. Hallelujah. All they had was a promise. Can I tell you, that's all you need. Sometimes all you need is a promise. And the reason why we don't step out on faith, because we don't spend no time with God. We don't know what the word says about us. We don't realize what we can do in Christ. We don't realize our authority that we have in Christ. We don't realize all of the blessings and the promises that God has given us. When we really, really, really realize what we carry, when we really, really, really realize how we are bought with the price, when we really, really realize we'll walk different, we'll talk different. Hallelujah, hallelujah. These particular young ladies, hallelujah, 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 they were agents of change. They were agents of change. And the thing about it is sometimes we're trying to look. Now, there are times when God will pave the way in front of you before you get there. But then I'm going to remind you of Mark. Mark said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Sometimes you got to make a move before you see the demonstration of God. You're trying to stand still, but sometimes you got to take a walk. And when you walk it out, these signs shall follow them that believe. And I want to know, are you the believing kind? I need you to level up. Are you the believing kind? God will show himself strong if you believe, but you got to walk it out. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes you need to watch what's behind you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. These particular young ladies caused a culture shift. Can I tell you sometimes, yes, we're going to shift the atmosphere, but can I tell you sometimes God will put you in situations that seem crazy. You ain't never been in a situation like this. You try to call some people and you tell them about your situation. They say, girl or oh, man, I never heard that. Can I tell you your unusual situation is for you to go through it so you can tell somebody that God is able, that he's able to bring you out. Sometimes we want to go through those nice things, but sometimes God will have you to walk through some hard situations that's going to cause you, it's going to force you to grow up in God. And can I tell you, you need to Level up. You need to grow up in God. We need to stop all of this foolishness and grow up in God. Can I tell you anything that's worth having is worth fighting for? These young ladies said, we're gonna, it's going to be a fight. But can I tell you, they didn't win. They didn't go there like, hey, y'all. We want this, we want that. No, 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 no. They went in the order. They were dressed right. They were dressed for the occasion. And they respected. And you know what? I don't know. You see, I'm, I, you know what? I read a lot of commentaries and everything. But you know what I remember? I remember Moses. Moses had married a Midianite woman. And, and, and what ended up happening, if you can let me help you here, is that one day, Moses invited his father-in-law to the camp. And the Midianite priest, Jethro, was observing Moses, how he was judging and counseling. And after the end of the day, Jethro said, you know what? What you're doing right now is going to send you to an early grave. You need to slow down and you need to appoint some other trusted elders that can judge these smaller matters. And only the big, the great matters come to you. And so then Moses, what he did, 
he had those that judged the 1,000, the 500, and the 100. So what I'm saying to you is that I believe these young ladies, they went through the chain of command first. They just didn't, didn't show up that Moses, they went through the first level and they presented their case and they like, we don't know. They went to the second level and presented, they presented their case. Then they went to the next level and presented their case. And then they came back and congregated and said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to wash our face and we're going to dress the part and we're going to go straight in the middle of the camp. So when they stood in the middle of the camp, the men were shocked, like, what is going on? And see, I just don't want you to think that they just showed up disrespectful. They went through all of the chains of the command, and then they presented their case because all of the other departments, all of the other tribes already knew what their situation was, but they didn't have the answer. Can I tell you that there'll be times when you go to seek advice that the people don't have the answer yet because they will only get the answer when they consult with God and stop forcing people to give you a quick answer to fulfill the desires of your flesh and leadership you should never give an answer just because the person say you don't got one yet you don't got one yet no I don't have one yet you need to wait on God until he give us an answer you need to wait till his will is clear you don't twist the man and woman of God's hand because you have a crisis. You got to wait on God until he gives you the word. Your tears, your situation, there's other people that went through the same thing and you got to wait and you got to get a neology and you say, God, I don't want to move until your will is clear. Level up. And sometimes we get to moving and the will of God is not clear. That's why it doesn't come into fruition. Because we move on our heartbeat and we don't move with the beat of Christ. Level up. We need to stop staying stuck. And we need to level up. The Israelites... They went in a vicarious cycle over and over and over. I believe they were the wilderness generation. Can I tell you, in order for you to stop the cycle, you got to first say, God, repent. You say, God, you say, God show me me. Because some cycles is because we refuse to obey the instructions that was given by leadership because it didn't sound right to us. And sometimes what we do, we pray a little harder, praying to see that we ain't really praying to God. We're praying that leadership would change their mind to give us the results that we want. But can you look at somebody? Don't work like that. If Moses could not enter the promised land because he did one simple act of disobedience and he forfeited his blessing. Don't let the saints or nobody else make you forfeit your blessing. Level up. Hallelujah. 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 I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Hallelujah. I just want to let you know is that God does not wink at any disobedience. He's going to punish disobedience. And can I tell you is that God wants us to level up. He wants us to level up in our faith. He wants us to level up in our love for him. And most of all, God wants to reveal to us his purpose and his plans. These five daughters change the course of history all because they decided to believe the word of God. They decided to believe the Torah. They decided to believe if our daddy told us that God had a promise for us, that God has an inheritance for us, they decided we don't care even if the other tribes don't believe it. We're getting our house in order. We're already making preparations for the land that God is going to give for us. And can I tell you, they were so smart about this, but because they're 
father was a firstborn, every firstborn got a double. So these five daughters got a double of their inheritance only because they knew their history. You don't get all that you need to have because you don't pursue, that you don't read, you don't study, you don't bombard heaven and say, God, reveal to me what's for me. Hallelujah. I believe that these five women were women of prayer. It's no way that these women could have built up courage to be that courageous if each individually of them did not have their own personal prayer life. Can I tell you, you can't do anything without prayer. Can I tell you, prayer is so essential. Hallelujah. There was a saying that I heard is that if you want to get God's attention, earth has, a put, earth has to put a demand upon heaven for heaven to release the blessings. I was, I was out of town and I uh, was coming in on the airport uh, back in April, I was um, leaving um, St. Croix, and uh, we were in Florida, and they were coming into BWI. And, um, and they said, the guy said, we're getting the pilot said, we're going to be able to land in 15 minutes. And it seems like we were going around in circles in the air. And I'm like, what in the world is going on here? And so what happened, the pilot says, is that we're at a holding place. We can't land until ground traffic control gives us permission. And I started to think, what is the ground, the earth? And what God was telling me, unless we put a demand on heaven, heaven ain't going to release the blessings. If you want God to do something, you have to be the voice in the earth. You have to be the one to open up your mouth and say, God, you. My family needs you. My community needs you. My children need you. You got to bombard heaven. If you say nothing, God can't do nothing. God is a gentleman. He does not just bombard himself. He needs somebody in the earth that's going to open up their mouth and decree and declare, God, I need your presence. I need your power. I need you to come in this situation. I need you to heal. I need you to do it. I dare you to bombard heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What happened? We, we, we pray heaven down. Hallelujah. And we keep hell from rising up. Hey, let me tell you this. I went to the doctor, a chiropractor, and um, I was having some pain. And it was really like in my shoulder, right? So when I went to the chiropractor, he did an adjustment. And when he adjusted, can I tell you, it hurt worse than when I got there. And I was asking the doctor, why does it hurt? He said, what happened is that I don't know what you did, but you did something to bring that bone out of alignment. And it had positioned itself in a place that it should not never been. So what I did, I had to make the adjustment to put it in the right place. And he said, in two weeks, you got to come back. And I said, well, I got to come back because it's a tendency because you had it in that place so long that it may slip back into that place. Can I tell you that sometimes we are so used for dysfunction that when we calmly come into right alignment, it hurts us. It makes us uncomfortable. We don't feel right. Hallelujah. But what you don't realize, that's the place you need to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like when I went to the chiropractor, I was, it was hurting before I got there, but it hurt worse. And once he did the adjustment, I'm like, oh my God, can I tell you the place of discomfort it's going to be the place of your miracle. Can I tell you the place of your discomfort is going to when God's going to answer you. Your place of discomfort is going to be the place that God is going to reveal, reveal revelation. He's going to bring, he's going to give you revelation from those dreams. He's going to let you write and you're going to see things you never seen before. You're going to hear things you never heard before because of revelation. Look at somebody and say, level up. Come on, look at somebody and say, level up. You 
ain't the first person, and you won't be the last person to level up, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Deborah, hallelujah. Or Deborah, hallelujah. She went and company Barak, not because she, hallelujah, about her, but Barak was afraid to go by himself because, hallelujah, Deborah had a word from God, and all she did was stand by the man of God. I come to tell you, stop trying to be in control. Your gift will make room for you. Your gift is in demand. All you got to do is work your gift. They'll call for you. All you got to do is work your gift. You may be like Esther. Hallelujah. Her uncle Mordecai, hallelujah, called her to be at a, a beauty pageant. Had no idea that it really wasn't about the beauty pageant. It was about saving her people much alive. Can I tell you, God is going to put you in unfamiliar situation. And you're trying to figure out, why am I here? God sent you there because you're going to be the revolutionary. You're going to be the one that's going to bring purpose. You're going to be the one that's going to bring hope. You're going to be the one that's going to bring can somebody level up? It matters. It matters what they call you. Say, it matters. It matters what they call you. The federal government calls you a taxpayer. The politicians call you a voter. The lawyers and attorneys calls you a client. Your physician calls you a patient. The school teacher and the professor calls you a student. The retailers in line, online, or at the store, they call you a shopper. Wall Street and the stock market calls you an investor. The airlines calls you a passenger. The hotels calls you a guest. The TV cable network that you pay calls you a viewer. The radio station calls you a listener. The magazine chains calls you a subscriber. The person who lives in your community calls you a neighbor. And the church calls you a member or parishioner. But God calls you his beloved. Level up! Level up! Come on, say level up! You can do it if you level up. Stop staying in a low place. Level up. And as I go to my seat, Pastor, can you give me that? I'm finished. Can you give me that right there? Yeah, that pole right there. Can I tell you? When you really get to the place of learning how to level up, you have to bring yourself into alignment. Bringing yourself into alignment has everything to do with taking time to know the word of God for yourself. It has everything to do with looking in the mirror of God's word and say, God, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit on the inside of me. And if you see anything that's not like you, take it away from me. These sisters, I'm telling you, you know anything about sisters? They have good days and they have bad days. They wear each other's clothes. They talk about the people they're in relationships with. But I cannot tell you, you don't mess with a sister because she has her sister's back. And if physical sisters have their self, have their back, what about the spiritual sisters in the body of Christ? We call ourselves a tribe of sisters and brothers. But do you have your sisters back? Do you have your brothers back? And a lot of times jealousy and fear prevents us from moving forward. Sometimes we are so used to dysfunction that when we do get healed or delivered, it seems like people don't pay us any attention anymore. So what we do, we go around starting doo-doo. I don't know if I said that right, but in the spirit, I'm sure you understand. 
And what God is saying on today, he wants you to level up. Come from that low place. Level up and stay connected to God. Do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes to mend relationships. You ain't going to be everybody's friend. Kenya, you ain't going to be everybody's friend. But can I tell you what? You are responsible to love them. You are responsible to help them to get to the next level. You may not be coming to my house for the, for the, for the, for the barbecue. I still love you from a distance, but we still need one another. And so as I shake this, when you level up, see the thing about it, some of you are not reaching your end is because you're trying to level up with unforgiveness and still being nasty and mean and all that and carrying junk. Mm -mm, it ain't gonna happen. But when you really level up, God will make you unbreakable. Situations will come in your life to shake you. Oh, they will shake you for everything you were. But when it's finished the shaking, you go back into alignment. Don't mind the shaking. And don't even mind when the situations bend you. Because he's bending you to break all of that foolishness out of you. He's breaking you because he wants you to come off that wheel better. My sister and my brother, I say to you, level up. There's a place that God wants you to be, but you can only be there if you level up. Come on, give God praise.